You are now listening to Playbook Radio. Here is your host, Martin Williams. And welcome to Playbook Radio. My name is Martin Williams. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can do so on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. All the links to the podcast can be found at GamePlanPlaybook.com. That's GamePlanPlaybook.com. So today what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, how overthinking can wreck your life. So I'm a master at overthinking. And the earliest memory I have of overthinking started in middle school. And when we moved to a new area in, uh, in Northern Virginia, and I had to adjust to a new environment, a new school, uh, a new group of kids, kids I didn't know. I didn't make friends easily. And uh, in fact, I didn't make many friends at all <laughs> for a number of years. And, you know, I can probably get into that in another podcast. But, you know, I had to deal with being uh, bullied and teased and everything else. And, you know, I know I'm not the only kid that ever went through that. So certainly not looking for any sympathy, but it's just something that I handled with overthinking because I never really dealt with what I was going with the school and, you know, therapy wasn't really um, as mainstream as it is now. So I stayed in my head and I stayed in my head for a long time that, you know, it was safe there. And I didn't really have to be anything other than what I was in my head. Now, as an adult, and I'm sure you know this too, we all know that staying in your head is not really conducive to long-term success and certainly not con- conducive to productivity. And in the area of performance, most underperformers stay in their head, whether they're athletes or uh, executives or uh, just the average nine to five person, they stay in their head. And as a, re- as a result, they overthink. Okay. And so overthinking is, is, I think some people have a very uh, non extreme view towards overthinking. It they feel that overthinking is normal and everyone does it. So what's the big deal? But I want to make sure that you understand that overthinking is is, is not normal and it's not something that you want to hold on to long term. And I look at it as a wrecking ball. It can destroy your life and it can destroy your life in ways that you don't really understand at the time. But over time, you see the results, you see what it can do. You see the wake of overthinking. The main reason that I look at overthinking as a wrecking ball is because you waste your most valuable resource, which is time, you know, and you waste it one minute at a time. So you don't even realize you're doing it in the moment. Okay. So how are some things that are some ways rather that overthinking can wreck habit? The first place is at your work or in your business. So things that you should have been doing or should have been done uh, for the longest time, don't ever get started because you thought about it for days, weeks, months, and you did nothing, right? And overthinkers with a business, oftentimes they think themselves out of profits. They think themselves out of opportunities because they either can't decide or uh, can't muster up the courage to execute or they can't, uh, you know, some mix of the two to either it's either indecision or lack of action, and then they end up doing nothing. And there's so many entrepreneurs, and me, I'm entrepreneur, right? Who have uh, many, uh, you know, many courses, have many uh, pieces of content, uh, you know, have all these ideas on their Google Drive or on their phone that never see the light of day because they overthink at school, you know, your assignments are late or they don't get done because your mind is in overdrive. You're just thinking going all the time. It's it's going all the time. You're processing all the time. 
and you haven't prepared for your exams, you haven't even started your papers and, you know, those papers get done at the last minute, your exams, you study at the last minute and you might get away with it for a little while, but eventually it catches up to you. And the third way is relationships. Overthinkers have full on conversations in their head and not with the people that they need to talk to, right? A lot of married people uh, who are overthinkers talk to their spouse in their head instead of like an actual person. And so things that you need to say to that other person often go unsaid because it's safe in your head and you stay in your head. So you talk about it in your mind, but you don't talk about it with the person, right? And relationships, communication is, is like blood to a relationship. So when you don't communicate, relationships tend to die. So what's the cure? What's the answer, right? If giving me a lot of negative outcomes. So what's the cure to all of this? Unfortunately, your mind is not going to stop thinking. You're not, you know, and we don't want it to do that. We don't want your mind to stop thinking. We want your mind to flourish, right? But you got to give it boundaries, just like a, a, a three-year-old. You can't leave a three-year-old to their own devices. I, I, um, we have a dog and he is going on two years old. And so we have been letting him go out without his leash to, uh, you know, handle his business. And he was doing pretty good. And then the other day <clears throat> I let him out and he, uh, he basically just took off, right. He is you know, off to the races. And, uh, at, at that time I was trying to get my daughter to school. So I really didn't have time to be chasing, a a small dog, uh, around our complex, but you know, there I was, right? And a lot of times our minds are like that. You know, our minds can just take off and go in, into a completely different direction. And if you don't give your mind boundaries, if you don't give your mind constraints, you are not going to, you are not going to uh, have the type of clear thinking that you need to have. So how can you help this? How can you, you know, heal overthinking or at least help it to, to, you know, to not do it as much as you normally do? The first way you help it is to decide, okay? A lot of people who overthink have trouble making decisions. And they live in indecision as a result. So if there's something that you've been needing to decide to do, whether it's a, a small decision of, you know, where to get your hair cut or hair done or, you know, where to take your unwanted items, or if it's a big decision, like, moving or a new job or something like that, sit down and make a decision because the longer that that decision is unmade, the longer you stay in decision, you build up, you know, basically a lot of thought, but you're not taking action, right? Your mind is con continuing to over process instead of making a decision. So set a time period, set a deadline to make that decision and then move in that direction. And if you have to pivot, if you have to reassess, then do that. But don't sit on decisions for too long. Make a decision and then move forward. The second thing you want to do is that you want to think on paper. You want to take everything out of your head and put it on paper. Your head is a maze of ideas, fantasies, and other stuff that we're not going to talk about. You can't really perform at your best in a mental environment like that. If you have a mental environment where you're thinking a thousand things in 10 minutes, you're not going to be able to focus. You're not going to be able to perform 
uh, the way that you need to perform with your brain in that type of pattern. So put everything on paper, um, all the things that you need to do, all the things that uh, you want to do, put it on paper, do regular brain dumps. You know, I would say weekly brain dumps are very helpful uh, to take everything out of your head, put it on paper. A lot of stuff doesn't need to be acted on. Some, some things you can put it on paper and then just throw it away. But other things, you know, other ideas, you can put it on paper and then strategize it and take action where appropriate. And that leads me into to the third thing, which is to write out and plan as many tasks as possible. One of the things that I've been able to do that has helped me with overthinking is basically writing out everything that I need to do for that day. So whether it's my job, whether it's my business, I, I do my best to write out as much of my plan and my task as possible and then go off of that because my brain needs something to focus on. <laughs> You know, it's just how it is, right? But if I, you know, if and when I do that, and I do it more often than, than ever these days, it's an antidote to confusion. It's an antidote to a lack of focus because if you're going to focus, you need something to focus on. So my plan acts as a point of focus. It's like a, a, lo a locus of focus, right? So you focus on the plan. Right. And then follow the plan and follow the steps. And it orders my mind. It, it calms my mind down. And I'm able to, you know, basically get a lot more done because I'm not overthinking too much. Right. So the, uh, the fourth thing is to execute. Right. So overthinkers have a to do list a mile long. Okay. And when you, make executing the goal and, and not be so tied to result, uh, you start to rack up those wins and you start to clear your mind and you start to look back instead of looking back at regrets and saying, you know, I wish I would have took action. I wish I would have did this. You can look back and say, hey, you know, I executed on that. I put that course out. I put that product out. You know, I contacted that prospect. You know, I had that conversation with my loved one, and you can begin to start feeling more accomplished as opposed to feeling, you know, like I said, feeling regrets because you didn't do the things that you needed to do because of overthinking. So uh, I want you to think about what are some ways that you battle overthinking? And if, if you're listening to this on YouTube, you know, comment, you know, leave a comment and, and let me know about you know, what you do to overcome overthinking. But uh, thank you so much for listening. My name is Martin Williams, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to Playbook Radio. If this episode helped you, please share it with family and friends. For more about playbook strategies, please go to gameplanplaybook.com.